Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dear, we're all going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, your Snapchat, and whatever else is new, we on it. But first of all, go check out our Patreon channel for those who love to see our full-length interviews before all these clips come out. Because let me tell you, the full-length interviews are out first before the clips start coming. So if y'all complain about the clips, y'all go subscribe. Y'all go, you know, for the membership, support the brand. Because we know y'all love us because we love you. So. Wow. Man, hey, man, listen, man. Um, you guys, you're in for a treat today. Mm -hmm. This guy don't need no introduction, man. He he really frequents the show. This is my guy, man. Uh, by Very way. knowledgeable. But, but this is first time. In, in Dallas, in, in the studio, in Boss Talk One Hundred and One, Dallas, right studio. in here, live in, li in living color, in living live color. in concert, like Pimp <laughs> said, live in concert, man. GD, what's up? He what's up? What's up? What's up? Building. What's up? What's up? Thank you, Miss Jamaica, and what's up, E back, back man. in the day. I the store. I used to look at y'all, interview people, and the pictures on the wall, and feel like I'm like, man, damn, all the pictures on the wall is just like, man. I'm finally here with up and all that, yeah. So. Man, I'm That's just good. happy to have you. I'm so, man, I was so happy. I've been waiting on you to come to Boss Talk 101, even though we was doing them in New Orleans and right. we were coming down there. I I hadn't been to New Orleans and did interviews without inter interviewing GD. Right. And that's the cold part about it, you right. know. And 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 the way it is, God put you with these different people, and you know it's God sent, heaven sent, bro. So mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for even pushing like you do for the show. And I always, you know, you brighten my day when you send me messages and just, you know, just talk about, you know, the South and the things that me and you agree on and talk about and touch a, you know, touch an agreement on because we like, you know what, man, this is this or that's that. And we'll talk about it, and sometimes he'll give me something that I didn't think about, him, or or I'll give him something that he didn't think about. But it's just a blessing to have somebody iron sharp and iron, my right, brother. Right, right. So thank you for always being there for me, sending me the messages. I'm gonna keep applying this pressure, man, for the South. And I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I love the East and the West Coast, but I'm from the South, right. and it hit different for me right. when I'm talking about what I did coming up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and it's just something when you when you really go, start to look. At it so man, we better get into it, man. So thank you, and uh, Mr. Maker, you got something to ask him? You want to top start it off? And I want to just tell you, oh, you gonna go? I just want to just tell y'all, thank y'all too, right quick. But shout out to the Midwest because you didn't say that because I know they're gonna feel. I like didn't say the Midwest. Yeah. So we so shout and out I'll to be up there. All right, that's sad. So I just want to make sure I do that for you because I don't want them to come for my my bro. Yeah, my I, I'll be up um, there. Yeah, so the Midwest too, and the, like you said, the South and the West and the East Coast. But thank you. And thank y'all because, like I said, the two times y'all did come to New Orleans, y'all set up the shop at the hotel. Y'all did about 3D night tea spot in yeah. St. Bernard Parish. Yeah. And I came through and all that. And it's Sharani's. It's Sharani. And it's Sharani, whatever. Miss Peaches, Peaches record. Yeah. Y'all did it over there by her. And, and even when you did the stuff with Jay Merck when he came yeah. on, you did it with Kuta and stuff like yeah. that. So I just want to tell you thank you because, like I said, I did get on the radar with Sean Cobb and the CT stuff, but the interviews that you've been doing with me and the relationship we've been building is like no other. So Man. I just want to thank you because Texas got this shit on lock with this media. Man. Like, and I know Atlanta got a lot of rappers and all that that's probably way bigger and notable, but what y'all doing in media, y'all kicking ass, mm. Man. especially for the South. So I'm just saying, Pimp C will be proud of you. Man. And he'll be glad to see what you're doing. Man, we like independent, that. man. Like, and I think that's what gives us our freedom is the, that not just us, but all the other people from Big D the Mogul, from mm -hmm. Big all D, yeah, my boy, Trill Big D. Talk, no Peel yeah. Talk, like I said, uh, a real, uh, what is it, Real Life Street, Real Life Street, yeah, all of these different people, Bobo, Bobo yeah. Super Tight, like these, these, these different. When you look at what we got going, it's another one too. And that little young dude been doing good. I know. I can't think and of that. Like, oh he pulled up on me. I know exactly. He pulled what up you're on the parking about. lot. He just has root, 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 root something. Root, root something. I keep saying root something. The young six, boy, he respects Boss right, Talk. Right. And I love the little dude. I love your plans. Don't keep pushing. Yeah, and right. his and his camera work is great. Yeah. I want him to know. I, I got to right. holler at him too. Right. Yeah. I, he didn't give me his number that day. Urban Politicians too. He out of Houston. So, yeah. It's a lot. And my boy done in Houston. It's a lot. Houston out there yeah. too and like I said Big it's D always come out tapping with Big D all the time yeah. I'm from Detroit 
But he he been out here. Right like, and you know what I love about so them too, because and I don't know where everybody's from, but I know you have some podcasts out there who probably be hating, but you have a lot of them who be pushing for other podcasts too. Right, they right. try to do things together because a lot of times I post stuff and I see other podcasts be sharing it or right. commenting underneath right. it, and I. I love that right. because it does show camaraderie between the media industry. Right, yeah. You don't have to be hating on another person just because they got an interview and you didn't or vice versa or whatever. But if we could all work together, we can all make something great because and when people are trying to do a media run, isn't, they're not just trying to come to one person. They're trying to go to everybody. Exactly. It's like if somebody going to, uh, they going to uh, Sway in the morning, they going to the Breakfast Club, they going to uh, Big Facts or whatever. Like, you know, right. they going to Big Boy in the house. They going everywhere. So you're right. right. So people want to make a, a nice press run, and I feel like I wish we could do a lot more of that, like that in Louisiana. And that's why I always try to spread love. And if somebody want to know how to use this app to blog, and they trying to do this or learn this or what book you read, G, I'm gonna give them knowledge. I'm not gonna hold it back. I feel like we're stronger together, right. and we could big one another up. Cause your style, exactly. even if you still exactly. interview me, somebody exactly. interviewing the style is still different. It's so different. just cause. Uh, Katie Kirk interviews somebody a uh, uh, Gail interviews somebody it's different a 60 minutes a dateline is still like but we all push each other right. the, the more you grow and get better it's gonna make somebody else step up their game right you understand right. what I mean right. but first of all I wanna start it off by asking you I see your logo GDP right, right. and that's an 8 ball is, am I yeah, correct yeah it's a, it's a P inside of, yeah it was an 8 why ball why the 8 ball well this is the first time I've ever said this the idea from this tattoo, you know, I'm a big Master P fan too. Okay. And um, Master P had an album that came out in 1994 called The Ghetto Trying to Kill Me. Okay. On that album cover, he got a woman on top of him in a bed. Mm -hmm. And he got his name Master in Old English, and he got P inside of an eight ball. Because back ah. in the day, everybody liked the eight ball jackets, and it just was some gangster about the eight ball, I guess. So, and a lot of people wore the old, had old English tattoos back in the 80s and the 90s. That was the thing or whatever. So I'm a fan of hip hop and I, like, I admire P just like I admire Cash Money. So that's why I got that deal from. So that come from Master mm. P 1994, the Ghetto Trying to Kill Me album. Mm, when I think about the eight ball, I think about completion because that's the last ball you have to to hit in right, before right. you win. So that I think too, about yeah, completion. Yeah, yeah. But my partner, I got a partner named Shea, I'm gonna say this, he got the eight ball, and he was like, man, how you gonna take an eight ball and put a damn P in there or whatever, man? Cause they out the eight ball, and a lot of them out the eight ball use uh, the eight ball or whatever sometime or whatever on tattoos and stuff like that. Got it. So he was just messing with me, he was like, man, that's it, I like the tattoo, but you got a damn P inside the eight ball? What the hell are you thinking? So that's funny, I just wanna say that cause he out the eight ball. You know we got wards in New Orleans, so right. he out the eight ball, shit, man. Shit, shit. So, I, I, you know, like I said, man, you, you stirred up a lot of trouble on here, uh, <laughs> you know, far as, and you didn't even do it purpose. So was it good trouble like John Lewis no, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was just the way that people felt about, you know, you being the spokesman mm. for, for New Orleans, you for know, New Orleans. Mm. yeah, like people, I seen people speak out about that. But like, who made him the spokesman of New Orleans? Well... You got him right here, I ask him. Who made you well, the spokesperson? I, like I said, I always taught Sean Cotton from Say Cheese gave me that nickname. And I, like I said, I never said I was no spokesman. I just was saying, I was speaking about how I felt about my opinions, but Sean just liked it, what I was saying. And I happened to be from New Orleans and I was defending New Orleans a lot in hip hop. So when somebody said, oh, we was doing this, Sean opposed me and I come with the receipts. And if somebody says something this, I defend Baton Rouge or Shreveport or Ratchet City. Like, I was defending them, so he started Because you're from your city. Yeah, I'm from my city. I was even becoming from my state because I was defending stuff that wasn't even in New Orleans. And Sean said that. So I didn't give myself the nickname Sean Cotton from Say Cheese TV. He didn't want to call me New Orleans spokesman. And even with you being a New Orleans spokesperson, you're not only the spokesperson for... Because I see you be posting stuff, and I see the way how the knowledge you've been given on our platform, you don't just be talking about things and that happened during your era right you're talking about from things from the past right. things you know to come everything right. like that right. so it's not like you just deal with people in your generation exactly am yeah. i right yeah that too and like i said talking about law like i said going to the state capitol building in baton rouge right. advocating for laws and stuff like that so it's way bigger than hip-hop it's just i know people love hip-hop and they're gonna listen because they like the music but in the mix of that i could sprinkle a little game and open their mind that's why on my instagram page i probably you saw me post the stuff about the guy in Mississippi mm -hmm. that got killed and they, they just swept mm -hmm. his case under the rug. Mm -hmm. uh, you might see me post the stuff about Eleanor, how they tried the reparation thing out with the with the weed and the 
the um, real estate tax or whatever, how they was trying to pay people $25,000. So just stuff like that to educate them on top of the hip hop, I try to do all that or whatever, and people but, don't even see that stuff. Sometimes. But the funny thing is that, you know, um, when I see you post stuff, sometimes I look, because we be so busy, but I know recently I see you post something about, um, I think it was from our show. Okay. I think it was when you reposted the Mobo Joe. Right, right, right. Um, and what he said and so forth. And I was reading the comments because I wanted to hear what Shout all your Mobo Joe. what right. all your fans Shout were out saying. Mobo Joe. And some right. some people were like, "Well, you charge them to be on your show and whatever." And then some people were like, um, "And they said you charge them to be on your show and you mm. only deal with street cats and mm. you only this that whatever." No, you only and deal with celebrities. Mm. One of them. Some I've seen that, but I've heard also street cats. But yeah. then I've heard some people like, "No, because he didn't charge me and I'm right. a street cat." Right. So you have you know some people gonna say, "Well, he didn't do this, but right. yeah, he did this." Right. And there was like a lot of Conflict. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of people don't be accurate. Um, I remember Mobile Joe said that I didn't post the stuff about his case mm -hmm. with his song, um with, yeah, Street with, to the West Bank. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um the Tomorrow song, but um a Glorilla, I did post about that and then a lot of my followers was in the comments saying I remember we talked about I wasn't even gonna even say nothing but they so were when you saying posted it, it did you I tag him in it yeah he's, he probably saw it now whatever but they were saying it and a lot of them were saying they saw it on there and um, even Q Red on the track that made our NBA Young Boy beats he was like he was one of them he remember he seen okay. it so okay. like I said I work a lot at my regular job, I mm -hmm. still do this blog and stuff for the culture, right. and I'm still working on trying to get my brother free from prison. So there's a lot of things I got going on, and I'm trying to make sure my family good, so everybody constantly pulling at me and thinking, you ain't doing enough for us, you ain't doing enough for outside, you don't care about us. Uh. You can't satisfy everybody. Right, it's like a Prince song. Remember when Doves Christ said, maybe just like my mother, <laughs> she's never satisfied, like nobody never is never enough. Never enough. But, in the comments, like one of the dudes said, he was like, man, I'm more of a a, um, a rapper like uh, Juice World. He said, I rap about, you know, guitars and melodic, and I'm not a street dude, and you post me a lot of times. Exactly, I uh, didn't see that one. Other people that say, yeah, he interviewed regular people and all. I didn't interview regular people. I interviewed people that got out of prison. Mm -hmm. People just see what they want. Plus, I bet I really don't even be interviewing. So I don't charge, I don't have a show like y'all got a show, like y'all really do this. I don't really be on YouTube like that. I be on Instagram, so that wasn't, True that I don't be I be charging people to get on my show. I might charge them a little something to be on Instagram, and, the, and them dudes that I do charge, they be like, "You really showing us love, cause mm -hmm. you really could be hitting us over the head." Exactly. And I don't. And exactly. And, and and I've been doing this stuff for three years now, probably going on three years, and I was getting a lot of um, attention on my page, cause there's a lot of people that I'm gonna say this on um, rest in peace. Boogie B, he used to tell a lot of history about New Orleans, about the projects and Storyville and all that stuff like that, too. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He got shot by a straight bullet when he was sitting in the car, unfortunately, wow. for um, around Christmas Eve, I think it was. And But he, they have certain people that they might do their stuff, but they don't post other little or all this other stuff like that to highlight. I was doing that. And I know not from Boogie doing because he was a comedian, but he still was educating people. But I was like, I'm going to get my page popping. I'm going to still try to post all this here, post this there, so they could get a little shine. And I, and that still ain't enough. I still open my platform up when I didn't really have to do that. But in reality, and we have succumbed to this many times before, is the fact that people will say, oh, you ain't interviewed this person. You haven't interviewed that person. Nobody really goes back to look. Right. To see if you did. Right. Put it in. Just like you said, you post something. Not everybody's going to see your post. Right, right. So when people say, oh, he didn't show this or he didn't show that, nobody goes back and, what, Do six months, reason. three months, whatever, and actually go down your page to see, okay, did he, before I say this, right. let me see, did he actually post it? Right, right. It's the same thing with us, too. Right, right. Yeah, like I said, I post that stuff with Mobile John here. Um, I posted something else that Mobile Joe did on Real Life Street Stars. I posted someone Ricky B, which was an artist that was signed on Mobile Joe. One of my favorite songs ever in mm. New Orleans is called Shake Shake for Your Hood. It was all good. That was on Mobile Joe record label. Cheeky okay. Black that made Twerk and Papa, you know, Twerk Something, Twerk Something. Mm -hmm, that was one of Mobile Joe mm -hmm. artists. So I'm very knowledgeable what they was doing. But like you say, I got so much stuff so going much on stuff. that they just think I don't, but I can't be everywhere for everybody. Like, right. Deion Sanders couldn't even cover the whole world. Like, he tried to be covered his ass off as a cornerback, but he still couldn't be everywhere all the time. So, like, they got to just understand I'm doing the best I can right. with what I got. And a dude said that the day he was like, here this dude is, people complain about he ain't posting us enough or he don't post this one or whatever. But they're like, this dude's spending his own money. They got to pay for their own rental cars. They got to buy their own food, their own hotels, and, and, and still got a regular job. And he put money into believing in himself to hit the road. Why y'all think y'all shouldn't bet on y'all self if I'm right. doing it? All right. 
but they don't see that or whatever. They just think everything coming back. No, I'm putting the work in and I'm p betting on myself because I believe in myself. But you should be, um, people should look at it in the flip way as motivation. And if they feel that you're not doing or representing, why don't they start their own podcast? Why don't they start their own blog and push the city even more? Exactly. You understand? Yeah. And wherever they think that you're lacking, right? go ahead and pick up that slack. Exactly. Yeah. Cause, and work together. And that's even going to make the city even better. Exactly. Because you only got to tell one down to build another one. You could just build another one. So that's just another bridge. New Orleans is surrounded by bridges. If anybody understands bridges and how important it is, it should be New Orleans. Exactly. So if you stand down on bridges, you, we can't cross them. Maybe we tear down the Crest City Connection. We tear down the one that's like there. We tear down the Causeway. We tear down these bridges. There's a lot of them. We tear these bridges down. How are we going to get around the city? We can't move nowhere. Well, let me, let me, let me go back to Mobo Joe for a minute just the fact of when you said you know you appreciate me for saying you know that you talk highly you know good about him because people don't realize before they before he did that interview I, I actually text you and say hey man what can you tell me about Mobo, Mobo Joe and it was just utter praise and good stuff about him being from the West Bank and just right. him being the first one him and the twerk and the whole the twerk artist, movement yeah, yeah. and it's just like you know, yeah, I told you that. Yeah, yeah, I like, you yeah that was the reason I was able to ask certain questions right. because of that. I'm always wide open to tell the truth about different things. I use you a lot of time or trio Very talk, transparent. different, and you always come through, even yeah. on silk. Anything, so shot, anything yeah. we ask yeah. you, you got something, and, and and I would, I would second the motion that Sean Cotton said. I definitely know you the spokesman <laughs> because of the way that you always have so much love, not just for one. Individual, it couldn't be just cash money. It, it can't be just uh, no limit. It can't be just big boys. West Bank. Can't be it can't be Bank. big. Yeah, it Take ain't four not, years a all of you loving all of them at yeah. the same time. And I want to say, man, that's big, bro. Yeah. And he has knowledge. That's one thing I admire about you. You have so much knowledge about the city and what happens in the city. Mm -hmm. You understand? And it, it shows through the love. I was just telling somebody at the restaurant there a white lady came in there and her friends they was eating one of them was from two of them was from New York and I think she was from Texas and she was eating collard greens there a side of collard greens y'all know the restaurant y'all ate over. so we, we they was eating the collard greens and the lady was like um, she was like you eat, try the collard greens I said well you ever ate them with rice she was like no, I don't eat collard greens with rice. You eat them with rice? I said, well, we eat a lot of stuff with rice in New Orleans. She was like, why y'all eat collard greens with rice? I said, because uh, when the French had control over Louisiana, a lot of the French was going to get a lot of slaves from like the Senegal area and bringing them back to Louisiana. They bought rice cultivation to Louisiana. So okay. you get okra, you get like the watermelon, all that, all that come from Africans, but okra definitely was a part of the gumbo, the original gumbo. That's mm -hmm. where the name come from. And the, a lot of the rice dishes come from the love of rice because the Africans like this. So, you know, you got, when you think of New Orleans, you think of like jambalaya, right. crawfish, say two fed, dairy it's rice, rice. Uh, red beans and rice, gumbo, just everything that we do, even cop greens, when we eat our greens, we do a rice. So that's why we love rice a lot because- And you mix the rice with the collard greens mixed together yeah, so or you just have it side? Just, well, you could, well, I'm, well, sometimes you might put the rice on and just put the greens on top, okay. but you gonna mix it in, but yeah, we right. eat the greens with rice, like gravy and I rice. I never heard that everything. before. We, do, we eat eggs and rice too. Like Mass P said- Eggs and I, rice. Yeah, like, well, eggs and rice. Mass P had a song uh, on True Album when he was like, um, Came out in 97, he's like, I always, Moby Dick on hook, I always feel like yeah. somebody's watching. Yeah. I'm paranoid, right. can't sleep, I'm in the street. Everywhere I go, I think they have to get man. He said, I ain't never had nothing in my whole life. I'm from the ghetto, grew up on eggs and rice. Mm -hmm. So eggs and rice is something that we might eat when we don't have nothing to eat. So we have leftover rice. Like say my mama made ray beans the day before uh, something, and we don't have no more ray beans, but we have a lot of rice left. We'll take some scramble, we'll scramble some eggs up, put some butter and salt and pepper or whatever on it, and mix it together. And and we'll eat it. It's not. It's like shrimp fried rice, but a whole man version because like you ain't got rice. the shrimp and the green onion. <laughs> you you just got salt and pepper and rice. But a lot wow. of people and put some butter in it. That's what we ate or whatever. So we just do everything with rice. Like we love rice and in, in Louisiana. What made you do all this research into your city? Because not every kid or every person living in New Orleans have the knowledge on the history. Because they don't teach it in the schools, right. do they? No, not, not 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 when I was coming up. Another thing, but I just love to learn, and I love where I'm from. Just like with the uh, with the um, the the French quarters, the original French quarters was all wood because the French believed in building everything close. So the original city is the French quarter. Then they started building back because it's close to the river. So the original city was the French quarters, and it was built with wood. But they had two great fires in the late 1800s. Mm. So when those fires 
burned down and then the Spanish took control then the Spanish used a lot of the courtyard type of stuff so that's why it looked like the West Indies like a Dominican Republic right. Haiti and all that with the pastel colors mm -hmm. and they got the courtyards and all that that's because the Spanish influence on architecture then all the, the French colors. got it back right the colors and even the the courtyards and all that and stuff like that the balconies a lot of that stuff is Spanish architecture type influence I would almost French think wars. that was French it looks to look more French than what? Spanish no it, it was it was French the French had it first the French made it tight right. but then the tight. Spanish put the, the balconies and the stuff balconies like that okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, I and guess then, so then the French got it back when Napoleon got it with the um uh French Republic yeah I gotta ask you about the um Charleston White using the N I G G A uh, brand, Tupac's uh, brand. Like, what um, when you when you think about when you, when you think about how he uh, pretty much uses that, mm -hmm. what does what 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 do you think about it? Well, first of all, I want to shout this picture out with Pac on the and wall. And Pac right there, I've been on ever Pac, since I opened the stove. Pac right there, well, uh, shout out to Pac and Myron Shakur. <laughs> first of all, I'm gonna say this with because Pac got his name from a uh, uh, um. A Peruvian liberator. I think the guy you have is from Peru. The original um, Tupac Amari is a, is a tribe of them. There's a lot of them named after that or whatever. And Tupac Mama named in that because she wanted to know not just black people went through a struggle, different people went through a struggle. And Tupac Amari was trying to liberate his people, but they killed him. They tied him up with horses to his arm and his leg, and they pulled him apart wow. to kill him. But he was a liberator. He fought for his people. So Tupac believed in fighting for his people. And he loved his people. Wow. Now Charleston White saying that they gave him the state gave him permission to use the N I G G A acronyms. And like Tupac, people said nobody know what the Z stand for because Pac never clarified that. But never ignorant getting goals accomplished. Um, Tupac Mama. Now Charleston White said he for the black people, right? But you say that you want to have babies with Mexican women, a uh, uh, woman that's not black mm -hmm. because, and it was on y'all show, right. because he felt like the hair gonna be nappy or coarse hair. Um, so he don't want to have a baby with a, with a black woman because he don't want no nigga hair, he was saying. Tupac love niggas, if you want to say that. He loved black people. His mama was very, very dark. Mm -hmm. His sister set is very, very and dark And she was for black folks. And his mama has a, a nose, wide nose features, really African features or whatever. So for you to say that you don't like that, Tupac mama, when she left North Carolina, because that's she was born at, when she moved to New York, she wanted to be a cheerleader. Everybody teased her because her hair was coarse mm. and she wore her hair low. She was pro-black because she was a Black Panther. So she mm -hmm. loved black people and she loved herself. So for you to say you represent that and you tearing black women down, then one time he was saying, uh, a woman ain't want to give me no sex, so I, I forced myself on it and try to eat her pussy and rape. You talking about raping people, but you talking about rap songs, talking about running trains on people, but you contradicting yourself. So that's a contradiction. You talking about the rap dudes, Try to train girls, but you talking about a girl that won't let you have sex with her, so you forced yourself on her. That's wrong or whatever. Wow. So like Tupac said, I wonder why we hate our women, why we rape our women. It's time to be real. Black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. So I hope that if he want to do that, because Tupac, I mean, our um, stepdad, Matula Shakur, was definitely a dog guy too. And he definitely loved black people too. And his hair was locked up or whatever too because he wanted to show his pride. So I just feel like for him to represent that and saying that he wouldn't, he don't, that's why he didn't want to have kids for a black woman because he didn't want to have no nigga hair. That's the crazy, like, like I don't really know what part of Pac inspired him. Pac inspired me and I would never say nothing like that. I would never look down on darker complexed um, women because Dave's mama or daddy at the time probably didn't get raped by a slave master or had that type of hair. Yeah. So I don't know. I just feel like that's crazy. And even when he still say, I think dudes should get locked up to go to jail. Young dudes, that's a better way to get it right. Every black guy don't got to go to jail. And a lot of times they go to jail, they be worse. Because yeah. they don't help them psychologically deal with what's going on with them or the trauma that they probably had in their life. Losing family members, being poor and being from the conditions that they come from. You feel like bring them from one, from out the frying pan into the fire and that's going to fix it. Like, I just feel like you lead, he lead, like a broke clock could be right two times out of the day. That's all I say. <laughs> Man, so, and, and you know, just the fact of uh, just all the time that you be reporting different things and saying different things, man, you always be on point, bro. <laughs> always be on point. Bro, you, that's a gift, man. That's yeah. a gift, bro. Mm -hmm. I sure want to see that podcast or them interviews more because right. I know they'll get, they're going to they're gonna go live. Right. Right. At the end of the day, the way that you prepare yourself Anytime you speak, and I know if you're doing an interview, it's going to be on a whole nother level, man. Right. 
Right. And, and shout out to Big Boz. I seen that interview deal with him, man. Yeah, yeah. Big I, I love, I love, I love it when I when I when I rock out with somebody that I ain't seen you do. I gotta go mm -hmm. back and investigate. Man, where the heck is Jay Merck? What happened with him? Well, Jay Merck, Let's I can't I can't get in all the details of the case, but he got locked up on this. This crazy thing is, you know, I used to work with BTY Younger before, and Jay Merck, I met him. Through, through Youngin. Yeah, through Youngin. So, but when Youngin, Youngin got killed on April 29th, I think 2017, J. Merck just went to jail on April 29th. He got booked in jail this year. So I was like, that shit was crazy to me or whatever. That the same day that Youngin lost his life, he went to jail or whatever. Now he fighting this case that he fighting or whatever, and they indicted him. Like I said, we got to see how everything worked out and stuff like that. But, you know, because he had, his, his sentence was on 14 years, but he had 12 years he had done and two years on parole or whatever. So like I said, I'm just praying that everything work out for him. He had just dropped his mixtape and he didn't even get a chance to see it like come out. He had, I had to put it out while he was in prison and stuff like that. And people been listening, you know, and a lot of people liked the song that he did about, you know, yeah. about which I'm call him and stuff yeah. like that. So uh, everybody, everything was going good or whatever. And, and then that happened and all that stuff like that. But I just thought that was crazy. crazy. Even when I told him that, he was like, damn, like, I, he was like, damn, I didn't even think about that. You're right. When he looked at the dates on his on his sheet or whatever, when he got booked in or whatever, it was that date or whatever. And I was wow. like, damn, that's crazy. That is real crazy. So I got to ask you, because recently, BT Awards came up. Right. And um, we were watching it, and I remember his reaction when he was watching it. He was wanting oh, I was more. Upset. He was wanting more um, southern, southern representation right. Right. till when he saw Master when P I come on. I got excited. He got, right. No, I promise you, he got so excited. Right. And then when Master P came back on no bird, man, then, and man. made his speech, and he mentioned Cash Money, right. I was like, we were like, right, right, right. You know, but why do you think? Cash money wasn't there alongside them there at the well, show. Well, I talked to I talked to Baby all the time. Matter of fact, I talked to him four times yesterday. Um, I think it's because I don't know what happened with Cash Money and BT. I don't know if something happened or Baby and them just probably was busy. Uh, they probably I don't I, I really can't see that part because I don't know. So you don't know if they reached out? Did yeah, they? I don't BT know if they out? really reached out to him because I didn't ask Baby that or whatever and stuff. I heard Turk say on the show that he they didn't reached out to them before in the past, but I don't know if they reached out to Baby and talked to him. And I didn't yeah. ask him about Especially that. Especially with Tyler Perry being from New Orleans, yeah, you would think that he would have brought more. Right. And, see, and you I know, don't think, I'm going to give him a pass. Yeah, I, no, you no, no, gotta no. give him a pass. I'm going to give him a pass. And the only reason why I'm giving Giving Tyler Perry so out early. Early. I think because he, he just because, they, because he just got it. But they said some people told me he didn't really close the deal. And oh, he really got it. that. What I heard, and I could be wrong. Somebody was saying they don't know if the deal already closed already. But I know Boosie did sit on the, on a red carpet. Man, I'm in here. Tyler Perry. Perry got me in there. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what's going yeah, on, yeah. but I'm gonna say yeah, this: yeah. if that thing would have had. Cash money on it, boy. Hey, that would have been a whole nother level. Man, you can't have mm -hmm. Southern, like I said, Bro. I like what they did on there and I love what they did for Uncle Luke. And they did a lot of stuff for Atlanta artists, but man, come on, man. Like Cash Money, the most influential mm -hmm. record label of all time in hip hop. Like all them eras, Drake, Wayne, Nicki, the high boys, Baby is a personality, Manny Fresh the Beats, Drake and them, Wayne, you know, Nicki Minaj. I, it. I think Drew, it's coming. Like, I should have said I gave Tyler Perry a pass because for the main fact, he just now got it. All of right. this stuff, you got to think about companies, period. Right. Companies plan this stuff months in advance, maybe right. maybe even a year in advance. Right. And he, he's gotten this mid-year. Mid right. You know what I mean? So I doubt right. he, he had that had much influence. On him. influence. He had probably right. some pull, but not a lot. Right. I, I look forward to seeing next year and see what he does with it. I definitely know, like you said, Cash Money, you know, people definitely was like wondering, like, how they not on it? Because like you right. said, that label had such a long run and did so much for the culture. Exactly. So like you said, I was glad to see Peter and I was glad to see that piece still show love that. to Baby and gave exactly. him the flowers and I stuff. Love yeah, that. but I got to say, man, you know, it didn't surprise me because I know... I've been Deborah Lee, really, you know how I feel about Deborah Lee. <laughs> mm. You know, I really didn't like the way BET was doing things, and I, right. I kind of turned my back on him. He did. Years right. ago. He did. Right. And, and But, you know, the Tyler Perry thing, it kind of made me look back at it, but I really, you, I wasn't surprised right. that Beyonce didn't show up. Right. That, that my boy, you know, that, that but she Birdman award, wasn't though. there. Yeah, mm. yeah, but they should have gave, I'm going to be honest with you, you, you cannot... You can't nitpick the South. Right. When it come down to the South, when you look at not only you got you got Outkast, right. uh, UGK, Good and Mob, you know, all, all these G. different come on, man. Three six. Three six. You got right. you got eight ball, MJG, mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. three six mafia. There's a litany of people mm -hmm. that wasn't there. Right. But right. cash money by far 
you know, reinvented themselves oh, over and over oh, yeah, again. Yeah. For each era, they had something that they fulfilled a need for our people, bro. Definitely. So, in the South, ain't nothing else right. when it come down to that. I don't even connect that with anything else because of the way it is. And even 50 Cent, I'm a big 50 Cent fan. Right. It, because of the way he always show love to to to, uh, to cash money. Right. Um, that makes me even rock with him harder. Even the fact that he's a smart dude right. and he make it easy for me to rock with. I rock with 50. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And when it come to the East Coast, ain't... It's fifty or nothing else to to be honest when you when you leave the uh Rock Him era. I'm a Rock Him fan right, too. Right. And uh, Eric, see Eric Sherman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I rock with Eric. I love seeing Eric Sherman come out. Right. But I'm just telling you, fifty is my guy when right. it comes down to you can't you you say Jay, I'm gonna say fifty. Right. I I'm a I know as far as just right, not right, lyrical, right, right, right. none of that. You just I'm love everything about, about him, yeah. I just like the way it's that he came everything. on the scene, the hustle, the rejection, yeah, yeah. the street, the being yeah. shot, the street, yeah. all that 50 stuff. Fifty was disruptive. Like fifty was That's disruptive what I'm telling you. I'm not saying he a yeah. better businessman. Right. I ain't got we ain't going there lyrical. I'm not yeah. I'm talking about for me right. when he came out. Right. You know what I'm saying? He was disruptive. I would say like fifty cent was disruptive the way DMX was disrupted when Puff and it was dancing around New York yeah. and Shiny Suits and then DMX brought it back to the streets with like you know Rough Riders Anthem and everything he did so that was disruptive 50 was disruptive that's why Jay-Z said y'all niggas better get y'all records cause they got a nigga named 50 Cent coming and he ain't playing and Dre behind him so you are right now I would say another person that I admire a lot that admire Baby and, and, and um Baby and Slim and Master P is Cameron from Dipset. That's why Cam was on my page saying I was spitting knowledge and facts, but because I, I was talking about when he went to college, I think it was at Norvo or something like that, the junior college down here. He went to JUCO playing basketball, and when he came now, he seen how much people rock with Jay Prince and Master P and Baby and Suave out, and he said I studied those dudes and I took that back to Harlem, and I really put that game down that I learned from down south, not from Russell Simmons, not on. Um, uh, not on Andre Harrell, you know, not none of those dudes from New York. Not Danny didn't say not really. He was saying P, Babe, and, and That's G hard. Prince. I, you That's know, and I, I hadn't studied Cam like that on that Cam, level. So fuck thank you, yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, Cam, Cam, love. he was standing on drink champs. He said they had dudes in our block that. in Harlem that wanted to be like like no no limit soldiers, soldier slim, C murder. This girl gonna be me ex. They was really saying I that. Seen him and yeah, yeah that was Jim him Jones and, did yeah. it too and. Two years ago, Wayno had Mano had cut Jim Jones off. He was like, man, y'all influenced a lot of people. Who influenced y'all? He was like, well, man, 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 baby, them influenced us with the deals. And he was like, he influenced you with the Birdman's. Then everybody in New York started laughing, and they put the little, uh, the little effect on where it make you laugh. And then he asked him another question. He said, so he said, yeah, bro, Master P influenced us too with the, uh, and the deal and all. Oh man, he influenced you with the Minyatis. The other dude said that. They laughing again. The man tried to be serious and say who influenced him since you asked him who influenced him. But he making it out of a joke. They making it out of a joke. They always trying to make us look like Bammers and Bunkins and them country boys slow. But them country boys whipped y'all ass on paper. And like Master P said, the South gave y'all the blueprint for this rap shit with how to get some money. Wow. Read it and weep it. Wow. And, and there ain't nothing you can do to get around it. And there's nothing you can do to get around the fact of how... The South came and changed the game in hip hop when it come down to uh, uh, independency right. and, and and really doing deals. You right. know, uh, Jay Prince first started it off to be honest right, with right, you, right. and and then you Luke had and Luke, and, you had Luke, Luke. and then you had Master P. Mm -hmm. He came hard, right. man, right. with Capital and all that. So mm -hmm. you can't deny. Right. The, and then Birdman is sealing. He sealed well, the deal. Yeah, yeah. So you know you can't deny this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And no matter how you try. You gotta always respect. Yeah, and PM deals with um priority, but priority, you know, priority yeah. yeah, priority. Because I know you always got people in the comments saying, eh, "Priority." Mm -hmm. I don't be yeah. thinking about it, yeah. but I know it's yeah. priority because right. when I interview, what's that boy name? Uh, Reggie, Reggie Wright. Mm -hmm. Oh, believe me. Right. He made sure priority was that right. he had meetings with him. Right. He kept saying it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I did you see that interview? Which one? The one with me and Reggie Wright. The one that used to be with uh, Def Jam. I probably Not Def Jam, uh, Def Row. Def Row, you talking about your boy that was like the security guard? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. He was actually security, but when you look at it. He was a police or something too? Yeah, he, he was. was a yeah. police. But when, when, yeah. when yeah. Chug went to police. jail, Pac, he had rights to all of Pac's music. Right. He was the one putting all the music out. Right, when Pac was wild. When, 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 when Chug got locked right. up. Pac died. He was controlling everything. Pac died. He was the one controlling that whole. So Pac, Mama got the music, the, to the music, and everything. Right. That that was the whole game at first. Right. Wow. So, so since we've been talking about cash money so much, I want to know why is it that Birdman wants you to be the NR for Cash Money Southern Region? 
Well, I think because he been watching me and he been listening to me talk on shows like y'all and seeing me talk on my Instagram page and just doing my due diligence, working hard and knowing, like he said, he, he kind of got on me too because Youngin, you know, I was working with Youngin, he said Youngin, you know, BTY Youngin spoke highly of me. So him figuring out who the face was, he probably heard of me from Young, but he didn't know who I was till he said, oh, that's the dude with GDP. That's the one he was talking about. Um... So he see my knowledge and stuff like that, and then he's seeing I'm curating things on my Instagram page, posting videos that he like, or probably like, oh damn, this music sound good. He probably seemed like he more in tune with what's going on, cause he really right on the ground with it or whatever. So I think it was that, and just seeing that I'm a student of the game. I think him and his brother are really smart enough to really know when somebody else got some special in him, and I think that's what he see too, cause I feel like he ain't been wrong. Over the years on the talent and the people that he didn't thought was dope, they was right. right he was right. right a lot of times, you know. How he long was, ago did he reach out? Uh, when he first reached out to me, that was like around Valentine's Day, I want to say, mm. I think. Um, and, you know, we've been rocking ever since. I went up there to Miami, J. Merck, YD, and a lot of us, um, my partner, OBG Bang, uh, G Jerk, a lot of us had went up there to Miami. And um, we went to Hit, Fa Hit Factory and, you know, we recorded some songs and he gave us some game and, you know, and it was a nice experience. I had never been to Miami and stuff That's like dope. this. So, really? No, nah, I never had been to Miami. That was the How'd first you like time. it? I, man, I loved it. I was like, God damn, the women beautiful. <laughs> you uh, in the, the South Beach? You in the South Beach? Yeah, the women. You the South Beach? The cars, you know, the houses, like, you know, it was just the whole thing, like, you know, and just being there for that, it was it was a beautiful experience, whatever. Like I said, I just liked the whole vibe of Miami. Like, you know, you could see all the, the Jamaican influence, the, the Haitian influence, just the Caribbeans. It felt like, Caribbeans in, even though I never been there, but it just gave me that with all the different mixtures of people. Like it was like gumbo. Miami is a big melting yeah, pot. Yeah, it's like a big melting pot. It's just in America, you know. So I, Bro, I feel like that's be, probably how it would be. You I'm, should be proud, man. Like I said, uh, people get excited when they hear, you know, about different things going on in the east and the west coast, but in the south, man, when you when it come down to Birdman and Slim and just Cash Money and the moves they done made, mm -hmm. ain't nobody really. You talk about disruptive about fifty. These dudes, man, these dudes, these dudes changed the game, bro. That was disruptive. Like the way Juvenile came with that high song, that was disruptive. That the way was he was crazy. rapping, the way he was rapping on back to that stuff. You working with some ass at your bad jet, making niggas spend his cash at. Yeah, yeah. We talk like that or whatever. That's disruptive because they people are like, what the hell is he doing? Like, how is he writing like that? But that's how we talk when we talk. Juvenile like to call it the off the porch flow. So that's kind of how he rap. Like he rapped from the project steps. Then you got, like I said, Cash Money just doing what they're doing with the diamonds in their mouth, stunting, doing donuts, the cars, leaving the car, leaving the, the leaving helicopter, the helicopters coming on the stage, the helicopter. Everything that they was doing, the deal was um, disruptive. Everything that they did was disruptive. But like Baby said, he wanted them to respect us, and that's why. I, P was the same way too. We gon' P like when they thinking, oh he dumb. He was smart enough to know I gotta go pay a lawyer to give me the knowledge and information that I need so I could get the deal. No I want. soldier. Nobody wasn't trying to think like that or whatever. But these dudes from New Orleans, even when you like you said, go back to Tyler, Tyler Perry. He was smart enough to know how he won his deal. Now he worked over two billion dollars. This is all coming from where I'm from. That's you know? So that lets you know the type of mindset that people have from here and what is breeding. So this is a part of our culture and um. Like I said, that's very disruptive. That was disruptive what they did in hip hop, and that's why they don't want to let shit like that happen again. But you got P from Quality Control, the CEO. He don't. He he probably got a lot of respect for Jermaine Dupri, and I love Jermaine Dupri. But he always give more credit to Baby and P. That's who we look up to because he identified more with them because they from the streets, I guess. So he could resonate with them more than uh, L.A. Reid, uh, Jermaine Dupri, and that's a lot of dudes from Nipsey was like that, Cam and them, uh, Dolph, Yo Gotti. I mean, I could go on and on or whatever. Turkey Mel, even the CEOs from Baton Rouge that was doing business with Pimp C. Yeah. All them dudes looked up to Baby and Slim and Master P or whatever. So, like I said, every head must bow, every tongue must confess that those dudes legend. I told Baby the other day on the phone, I said, Baby, <laughs> one day, I hope it be 100 years, 200 years from now, I hope you live forever or whatever. But I said, one day they're going to have, if they don't do it now, they're going to have statues with you and your brother and they're going to have you smiling. I hope they put diamonds in. I know they're going to they go have to shield it where nobody can't take the diamonds out or whatever, but they need to have his mouth showing with all his diamonds or whatever. Yeah, of course. Because that's what he wanted you to know or whatever. And so like he wanted you to see that bling and he was going to put it in their face and let them know we, I rock ice. Man, shout out. To, I got to shout Slim out for that book. Go ahead, Secret Minds of a Millionaire mm -hmm. by T. Hall Becca. It was a book that he was reading. Right. And you don't get much from Slim. Right. Sugar Slim, but, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, but Slim was, was reading that book and 
he he let it slip out that he was on the airplane reading that book. And I went and got that book, man. That book helped us so much, man, in finances. Right. Uh, that, just because I pay attention to it. Right. I'm going to get that book. Yeah, too. Secret yeah. Minds of a it's Millionaire. Really it's a really good book, okay, man. Okay. And uh, I got that from Slim because he yeah. don't talk much, but I, I got that from him. I just had ordered a book, too. Or whatever. It's, it's, it's an old music executive, but I just be trying to see because they always try to make like the black music executive so bad. But I'm getting a book on Morris Levy. Okay. They call it the, the Godfather of the Music Business. You know, he was still doing a lot of shit with the mob and doing a lot of bad shit. And this it's a white guy, but they'll just try to make like all the black executives so bad, but they've been doing it. Leonard Chess, all them guys all and stuff. So I wanna read the book. I know about him, but I just be wanna read. So I be getting a lot of books on Amazon. That's one I got coming in now too. I yeah. got a question. So back to the the NR part of it. Mm -hmm. Um you step into that position. Mm -hmm. Um, what is it that you would bring to the table that nobody else would? Well, I mean, like I say, I feel like I got a good ear for talent. I feel like I know how to nourish talent if they, if there's talent there. I feel like I could work with it and stuff like that. I did it before when I was doing the stuff with my cousin at Zero Six. I, I work with the artists that he has. So I feel like if they got some type of talent, I could work with them. But I feel like my eyes out there because I'm on the thing blogging and I got a lot of other friends and good people that got great taste in music that be like, look, I see this, I see that. Just like Puff said, a lot of times he might pick all of a lot of times. His girlfriend might have said at the time, mm -hmm. Misha might say, this hot, or this the nice clothes to wear. So those people help out too. So it's a lot of good people that I feel like I got around me too, but I feel like I got an eye and an ear for it. And I feel like he just realized that I do too or whatever. I just need the, the, the opportunity to be able to showcase that or whatever. A lot of times people just need a chance. You know, you got, like Jay Prince always say, you got a choice and a chance every day. You know, choose wisely. So I feel like I can make the right choices to, to to benefit you know the whole team or whatever what's your goal in life my goal in life is to be big with music um i want to be able to help a lot of people and put more people in position when i get on i won't try to make other people entrepreneurs and help shine light on other people because i feel like we shine together like big meets always say you know we shine shine like new money mm -hmm. and we shining together everybody could be bosses everybody could pull each other up and like jay-z said before we know no one would ever fall because everybody be each other's crutches so if we really kind of hold one another down or whatever, then that could kind of help more of the people. I feel like a lot of times people get the ball and run off with it and don't share it. So I really would want to share and help people, you know. <laughs> I saw the Billboard magazine, man, uh, top, top 50 uh, greatest hip hop groups. I'm gonna say top three, man. Top okay. three groups, man, uh, of all time. Your top three. My top three, and I'm gonna go from every era because I'm not going, and, and I'm not gonna just be. I love. I'm gonna say this first. I love the High Boys. I love No Limit, but that's not gonna be my choice. In my top three in the last 50 years, when I'm looking at the music, the impact, and how many albums a lot of them had. Um, number one, I gotta go. Uh, Outkast. I gotta go out really? because yeah, I'm gonna go out. I used to like Outkast a lot. Like I, I still like them, but when I was younger, that was like one of my favorite groups. I always liked the Andrew 3000. Uh, like I'm a big boy. Story. I'm a big boy fan all too. Y'all be forgetting about no, big, big boy. boy man. Go and, and and Dre always said big boy made him better. He like I probably wouldn't be as good as I was if I wasn't next to my brother. But I, it was just something about Dre that just drew me to him when I was younger. Maybe because he was so different, I felt like I was a lot different. Um, but. Outcast, like I love Outcast a lot of them. I probably say Outcast number one, and, and like they was right. The South got something to say. Who knew that he, Billboard yeah, that, putting that, them that, as that number one it. one day? Yeah. You know, it came full circle. So I would have to say Outcast because the impact, the albums, just the shit they was able to accomplish with the music, the diamond records and all that, the five mics, everything they was able to do, they shattered it. Number two, I gotta go NWA, the world's most dangerous group. Easy E, Eric Wright, you know, uh, Ice Cube. Dr. Dre on the beats, uh, MC Ren and DJ Yellow. They was disruptive at the time. They spoke to the times. You know, they spoke for the dope boys that was in the hood that made dope boys feel like you could really get some money in this rap shit because he's E doing it. So I feel like that inspired a lot of people and, and it brought us into Compton. Like they brought us there and they made us like infatuated with this city and just want to know more about it. And it, and it felt like they represented us and they were speaking to us. And the times, like I said, and number three, I got to say Run DMC because they impact at the time and what they meant to hip hop and just like I said, the swagger, the music, Pimp C, one of his favorite rappers is Run. You know, so a lot of people love Run DMC and a lot of people was influenced by them and they and it was just so great together collectively and they mean a lot to not just the East Coast but just the hip hop as a whole and the foundation, the barriers they was able to break, the things they was able to try 
and um, and even the style that they bought, you know. So I, I gotta say that's my three, and that's one from the east, the west, and the south. Man, man. you was fair. You was uh, fair. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I've been known not to be fair on this yeah. show when right. it comes down to Now, like I said, I know I like I like A Ball and MJG and UGK. Oh and, man, you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't but get that list. Six, but I, but I, that's who I that's who I gotta go when I look at it like just factual and just being fair, you know, and not trying to be biased because mm. I know I'm from New Orleans. Oh yeah, we won't see that. You know, and yeah, I feel like Hot Boys really influenced you. I'm you not, share it up amongst everybody. Yeah, not just I and Hot Boys really influenced you, and 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 Dipset was really influential in my era. But I'm talking about 50 years. You mm -hmm. can't just go from 10 years or 20 years. You got to go from the beginning to years. right now to present, and look at who did all this, the most stuff in that time, and the impact that's still around. And I remember Melly Mel said, um, from the legendary group Fierce Five, he was like, "You gotta." Look at greatness about how things change after. He said Tupac is greatness because things change. People went to putting tattoos across their stomach. Everybody wanted to do this and do that. The bandana is like bandana the music is. he made. And still to this day, all the rappers saying he the next Tupac. I love Biggie, but you don't hear a lot of dudes saying he the next. He didn't, they always say that's the next Tupac. That, that's, that always pisses everybody off. Compare a new rapper to Pac and watch how people get mad because they're going to feel like you can't compare to Pac and what he represented. Because greatness. When you have great leaders or great conquerors, they came and they changed religions, they changed cultures, they changed a lot of stuff. They just changed things. And Tupac did that just like Michael Jordan or even Steph Curry with basketball. He changed the way you got to defend. Michael Vick changed the way you have to defend a quarterback that's mobile. So all I'm saying is that these people that I named changed the game. And that's what greatness do. Wow. Mm. Wow. Um, you like basketball, don't you? I like it a little bit. I, I was more of a football. I, I, I like Adam Iverson, but I was more of a football. Um, no, because yeah. the, what I was thinking about, because when I heard you mention NWA, and I know um, Ice Cube right now is going through. Oh, you the, know, big he, the big three? The big right. three. And he came on his social media and was talking about how the NBA, and I never thought about it before, that the NBA would probably give him problems because of how the big three is moving. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the fact that he wanted him to come on board, mm -hmm. but he just don't want him to give him any problems. Right, right. Which apparently they've been giving him some, you know, flack right. with his um, three, three on three. So mm -hmm. he's about to start going on tour talking about it. Right. And really advocating for his three on three and how much the NBA is giving him flack for all the stuff that, you know, I, right. he hasn't really gone into everything because I'm thinking he's leaving that for the podcast that he's going on right. and another reason why I brought it up because I love the fact that when I was listening to him he didn't say I'm going to all these radio shows Right. he didn't say I'm going to all these TVs mm -hmm. he said I'm going to the podcast mm -hmm. I'm going to these media outlets he's not talking about you know right, so right, I'm right. like for him being who he is and seeing that this is the new wave of course yeah I it, love that no nah, that's, that's a fact I mean that's mm -hmm. what it is right now like the everything changed and I remember I was, you know, talking, um, me and Jekyll was talking, I was like, Master P right there, man. He was like, fat, fat, and all that, worked on the radio station at Q93, this is Master P right there, man. And I was telling him about even how powerful I see the blogs is, what I'm doing, the other big blogs, uh, podcasts, it's like, that's where everybody going at. You know, people getting hard interviews now. They're not getting all the soft stuff that you might have got at regular radio when they just say all the good right. stuff. And it just be kind of like, all right, we know this cookie cutter shit, the same thing. <laughs> uh, you know, you could just pay somebody to get in the magazine. Now you got bloggers, curating stuff like the Say Cheese or the Academics. You got people like y'all coming up independent, black owned, black operated. Freedom like Master Peace always say, freedom of speech, you could talk about what you want and we could build our own audience and get right to our people through these YouTube channels because everybody was on their phone. So now, Everybody, I, and Juggy said this too, he was like, he was telling us to Mass P, he was like, a lot of kids wake up and roll over and they're checking their phone first. They're not getting no newspaper. The older people might go still grab a newspaper out the store and read it because that's how they come up. But people reading their stuff on the internet, they're reading it on Twitter, and they're getting the information from all of them, these YouTube blogs and stuff like that, all these podcasts. So Ice Cube was very smart to use that because he see that's the new tool mm -hmm. that you got to use to get to the masses is through the internet because the internet then made a lot of millionaires. And Dolph said it before too, he said, if you want to become a millionaire, figure out how to use this phone, this small phone. You can figure out how to use the internet shit, you can turn yourself into a multi-millionaire. When I first <clears throat> started Boss Talk, it was because of the way that our children stay on the phone. And because I see people on the phone and I see all this different stuff going on and I was like, I gotta inject something into that 
to wow. where we can basically have a voice that they can at least have an opportunity to, you know, pretty right. much go and look at. Right. And that was that was big for me starting out. Right. Even though it was other things too, but right. that was a huge thing for me saying, how do I get to, you know, where the kids are not just seeing this one way this with this one way that things look right i want to give it something special right, from right. A, from my point of view nah. my standard and i thought that was pretty good nah, yeah. and i'm glad you did do it or whatever because like i said i admired it from the first time i saw it and when i saw the different camera angles and the setup i was like what the hell is this like yeah. this shit like hitting off some shit and i'm thinking like you know i'm looking at stuff on revolt and all that but y'all ain't y'all independent <laughs> y'all just you so good at the camera work and Knowing that having a background, it, it yeah. just made it where it's like, all right, damn, I can use my background from where I come from. I already love what I'm doing. All we got to do is just start. Yeah. You know, and just start yeah. somewhere. That's what a lot of people don't understand. All you got to do is make a chance and a choice to just start and just start moving. And the more you go to doing it, everything going to just start coming together. And, and the universe is going to go to work for you. All the doors going to start Man. opening. So just don't stop. Did you, by chance, did you hear about the name of his tour, by the way? Uh, um, Ice Cube? Ice Cube to know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> it's called F the Gatekeepers Podcast Tour. Wow, wow. F the Gatekeepers, yeah. Can we think so about do you think we're going to be able to get him on Boss Talk? I would love... Boss Talk 101? Come on now. Right. You know, I really, to be honest with you, I, I, we spoke with Mobo Joe about Master P and mm -hmm. Baby, mm -hmm. you know, coming on Boss Talk and mm -hmm. having that interview. Right. We put it in the universe. Right, right, right. You're, right. <laughs> you know, we say if they going to do it anywhere, it would be on Boss Talk. Because we're, we're the most platform. southern platform. Well, baby, like, are, yeah. baby, baby like Boss Talk. And you know, Man, when, I was I on the phone, when I was on the phone with Baby, the other day I had him on the phone. No, I had you on the phone. I was yeah. talking to you and baby yeah. happened to call me. Yeah. Birdman and I, um, I said, I'm about to click you in. I clicked you in because he was already talking about you before. Yeah. Or whatever. When he said, Man, I yeah. want to do your show. I want to yeah. fuck what I like with y'all represent for the yeah. South. And then you talked to him and he was able to tell him yourself or whatever personally. And, you know, he told you he rocking with you. Oh, yeah, man. Dope dude, man. Like I said, that was easy conversation because I already been coming for this dude. I love the way, he, you know, he's a detached boss. Mm -hmm. He basically repped the South from a place where you can't, you can't sway him. His own, he makes his own decisions. And that's the part that I like. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it don't matter what you think, he gonna do his thing. And I always was like, I don't care what nobody else doing because I know already what it is to come from the South. I know what it is before hip hop even started. I'm right. an older cat. Right. So I, I watched hip hop come into play. Mm -hmm. And I watched phases of hip hop. Right. So to see somebody of his stature doing what he's doing and not nobody twisting and turning his moves right. is just spectacular right. for me. Yeah, he's not everybody else, uh, but to me, him, P and Prince, Jay right. Prince again starting this thing out, they're not being they 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 bosses, right. bro. Yeah, they, they, they this boss gonna, talk one on one. They're not gonna break easily, like you, <laughs> you said. Know what this boss talk yeah, one on one. You can't just baby. throw no little numbers in front of them. You can't make them no. feel like you. No man, we know we deserve and we know we want and we ain't gonna. We ain't gonna compromise. We gonna we gonna negotiate what we want. We know we got. We got the leverage and we got the ammunition. We got the we got the fan base. So we know we deserve. And that's kind of how they still is today. And that's, that's what they what's taught hard. us. Yeah. That you know when you know you got some. You, you know you got a good hand. You ain't got a fool. No, you, you know? don't. Man, you you talked about Master P's uh, glasses. Uh, me and you and my mm -hmm. wife and him. You know, I don't think nobody ever just brought the that, diamonds, the and diamonds in the glasses. And 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 what made you think about that? Well, I mean, I seen a lot of rappers in Detroit doing it, and it got popular even more with them because a lot of more rappers from Detroit got big on the scene. Like back in the day, I didn't really remember seeing that many Detroit rappers growing up and stuff like that, that I knew that was just like super big, that we was, I remember the biggest one I really knew at the time was Eminem. And they had other ones, but it wasn't like, to me, like that was the main one. Then you started seeing like Big Sean and then you get the T Grizzly into where Detroit at now. So I didn't see no Detroit rappers with the glasses, cause I, cause I, cause Eminem wasn't doing it. So you know when I seen Big Sean was fly, and you know I seen other dudes from Detroit, but I seen Master P with it in my city with the diamonds in his glasses. But then I seen him on a movie, Foolish, and he had the diamonds in the glasses. And the lady was like, you know, you're a car salesman, and he was like, yeah. She was like, with diamonds in your glasses, he was like, I sell a lot of cars. <laughs> so in Detroit, they really known for putting diamonds in their in their woods and stuff like that. And um, Blade Ice World from the Street Law is real popular. For doing that like he was the one that they say like really popularized it a lot who started um, it uh well people might say 
They started it, Detroit. I'm Did talking you about do first, your research yeah, and look? Well, Silk, first, Silk said he, he, he never said he knew nobody the even the first did it no, in Detroit. Silk did say that. That's what I'm saying. The first person I seen doing it on TV was Master P. That was the first person I seen in pop culture. Not saying that this was something everybody in New Orleans was doing. But you don't know if the they started it first. It was not on TV. It, probably, it. it couldn't have been on TV. See, that's like, right. that's like Deion Sanders. Like, Somebody could have been, all right, like, I'm going to say, like, Michael Jackson. Like, they probably had people uh, moonwalking it was. anywhere. It was. Yeah, they had a dude from California that was on Soul Train. Oh, so, that that's right. Brand. That's yeah. right. But, but, but Michael Jackson did it first. Motown, Motown, 25. Motown, 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 Motown 25. He did it. Boy. <laughs> so, yeah, Motown 25, that was the first time he showed that dance to the world. So, when everybody saw it, that's when the world saw it. And everybody so, resonated that with him, Michael yeah. Jackson. When Adam Iverson was doing moves that people probably was doing in Rucker Park, what, what I got on Harlem, Rucker Park. Shout out. What, what people probably was doing on the Rucker Park, but Adam Iverson did it on the basketball course. So we were like, damn, that's the first in time. In front we of probably millions seen, of people. In front of millions of people. When Master P did it with the diamonds in his glasses, the first time I seen it, and like his brother Silk the Shocker said, Dudes are mad. People already got gold chandeliers, three hundred million dollar deal. That shit wasn't nothing. People probably <laughs> spitting diamonds out their damn mouth, man. They could put diamonds in everywhere. Put diamonds in the in a damn champagne glass. They put it in the glasses. So that's the first person I seen, and I said that Detroit probably wasn't doing it, but it wasn't till we didn't see it till we probably started seeing them on World Star and on YouTube videos, and now that they popping, yeah, I give it to them. They buffed up. They do all the movies with it. That's what they do. People get robbed on a ride from. They be jacking from. They sell them on a the black market. It's really a part of their culture. They like the woods. They like the buffs with the with the with the white sticks, like they call them. But like I said, the first person I seen on TV, because I seen them in New Orleans with it, but I seen them in a movie was Master P, the the, the one of the biggest. To Man. do it, and he's from New Orleans. Diamonds in his cup. So you're talking these. about Master P, but what makes Master P, um, Sugar Slam, and Baby, and Baby so important what makes to him, the hip hop? Hip -hop? What makes them so important because they show people how to own stuff and not bend. When you know you got a good hand, don't don't let them tell you nothing different. If you want this, go get it. You got to be independent. You got to build something. You got to be able to work hard for it. They taught us that you got to grind. You got to hustle. P grind out the trunk. Cash money grind out the trunk when they were passing out flyers, getting out CDs, building their name, coming to Texas doing shows. They got old footage in Texas when nobody wasn't even really moving too much to the music. But look at them now. It, they put the work in. And then they didn't just put the work in. They owned it. When I look at the show with Wu-Tang Clan, like Joe Budden going to say nobody wouldn't want to watch a Master P movie. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. <laughs> like, what, I want all the cameras. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. <laughs> Joe Budden gonna say some stupid shit like that on national TV. Uh, I mean, on his YouTube channel, there's all these people watching. Who not gonna wanna watch a masterpiece? That's, that's, come on, man. If you're a hustler and you come from the bottom, who not gonna, first of all, you got a story about New Orleans, so you're gonna get all that stuff that was going on in the Calio project, how they gonna set that up, or just uptown at that time when P was coming up in the 70s, in the 80s, to the 90s, what was going on at that time, then you're gonna get the stuff he was doing in the 80s to the 90s in the Bay Area, so that's gonna be a whole nother fan base that's gonna love to tune in on that, then just when he got the deal and all that shit. So how these dudes not important? These dudes got deals that Russell Simmons couldn't get. Russell Simmons them getting production deals. They can't even pay the staff. All they can do is make the record. These dudes getting real money. These dudes dropping an album every damn Tuesday. These dudes dropping damn the 28 albums in 1998. Who could do that? Y'all got to wait to drop one album a year. Y'all got to cry to drop one song. These dudes, this man drop when he won't drop, man. This man can yeah. wake up and say, I want to drop an album tomorrow, and he could do it. So them dudes, like I said, they show people how to hustle, how to be bosses, how to own your shit, and how to make something out of nothing. That's what Baby and Slim did, and that's what Master P did, and that's why niggas respect the South. Now, shout out to what Atlanta doing now. But you don't get the South dominance like that until cash money and no limit kicking the door. Because P kicked in the door and showed him how much money niggas getting. That's why, I, um, um, like I said, Jay-Z said, you need it, I got it shit. I spit that Master P body body shit. He knew what they was doing out here. So you get, and it was on the same label because Rockefeller first album, Reason Without, came out on the priority. That was the same label that P was on. But, um... Shout out to Dame Dash. Shout out to Dame and Dash. Shout out to Bigs yeah, over there too. Shout out to Bigs. Shout don't, don't do that. Shout, shout out to Bigs. You know, I'm, I'm real into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know shout, what I'm shout out to two from Harlem. Yeah, yeah, shout yeah. out to Harlem. Oh, yeah, Harlem. Harlem. I'm so, a big Dame Dash yeah, fan. Me too. So. Me, me too. Dame so. and Dash, one of my favorite scenes. I ain't gonna lie. When I, yeah. when, I, when, I really, when I really started looking at the moves that was made and the way he done, you know, a lot of people say, oh, man, he ain't this and he ain't got that. But 
he did some things, man, you can't take from him, and, and, and they try hard. Right, right. But he's still, to this day, you know, pushing his independent wave and doing his thing and, and looking out for his kids, yeah. man. Um, that's what being, that's what's gangster. Yeah. You know, that's what's real gangster. When I see, uh, when it, whether it's uh, Dame or whether it's Jay-Z or mm -hmm. whether it's uh, a Master P and right. his boys, right. you know, and his daughter, and, and, and just... The family is that's what's gangster, the bird man and his right. son. You know what I'm saying? His family, the way him and Lil Wayne and Reggie, all right. them hang out. Right. That's more gangster than the music will ever be. Yeah, yeah. That's more gangster than the streets will ever be. Yeah. Taking care of your family and loving your loved yeah. ones, as I always tell people, mm -hmm. way harder than everything. Damon Dash always that. say you got to hustle. Way for harder. Yeah, Damon Dash always say you got to hustle for your last name. And that mean a lot. That's like real. Said, Dane always fought for the culture, always fought for his company. He fought for... The, the underdog and that's why I always liked him too because he was an artist advocate but back to the stuff with Joe Budden like I said <laughs> Master P definitely would deserve a show because when I was looking at Wu-Tang stuff Rizzo was fighting to get a hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand or two hundred thousand for each artist with different labels that was all signed to with the Wu-Tang members but nobody didn't have a deal like Cash Money nobody didn't have a deal like No Limit but this what they won't put on and there's nothing wrong with Rizzo and them only thing I didn't like, I didn't like when Rizzo did that damn move in New Orleans and he tried to make like dudes in the night wall fighting damn raccoons. <laughs> Nobody ain't fighting no damn raccoons like pit bulls. Like y'all made that shit look bad. Dudes ain't doing that type of shit in the night wall. Cross Canal. So I didn't like when Rizzo did that shit neither because he was out of touch. But they out of Joe touch. Button, Joe Rizzo, Button, Rizzo, y'all better stop yeah, playing. Right. But Gita, Gita yeah, not trying yeah, to hear yeah. it. Yeah. Rizzo was out of touch. With, he knew how to study the damn Chinese culture <laughs> with the with the Wu-Tang stuff and all that to do that. But you didn't know how to study New Orleans culture enough to know that nobody not down there fighting no damn raccoons in no damn cages. Another uh, Outside no cages. Another thing, Joe Budden, people would definitely watch a Master P series and I hope 50 Cent get behind it because P helped them out back then and I hope he could return the favor and shit like that. Another thing that was groundbreaking. I just P, told you 50 yeah, is my guy. Yeah, don't yeah. play. Stars, if y'all don't want to get 50 what he need, 50 need to go somewhere and get that check because he deserve it. But Master P definitely deserve a show a series to tell his story and cash money too and another thing that was instrumental with baby and them did and p did when they did i'm about it movie that movie brought you to new orleans and showed you what was going on so you heard the music then you got to see the projects and just the way nigga was living down here and that was different or whatever so like i said you shout out to baby you, you and, think, P and all you, you, think, so. you think p just was a little bit before his time the way he came in the game he was independent the whole when he first came and he still he went to the movie wave yeah. and all that other stuff he he came he some would say he, he was before his he time. definitely was before his time you see what i'm saying yeah, he definitely was before his time even be able to play basketball you know have the cell phone yeah. companies do the sports management he was doing this, like all of rappers trying to do sports management now he probably didn't have it all the way right how he wanted to have it where it was like great but he was on to some early though for him to even jump into that doing the stuff with ricky williams or whatever he was still on a lot of things early so p just he just like a serial entrepreneur. He always got his hands in something. Now, some might say he ran himself so thin because he was trying to do everything or whatever, and that's why I heard Baby was able to hyper-focus on music or whatever, and that's why he was so great at it because he just locked in on his, like, Kobe Bryant locked in on just basketball. Uh, Michael Jordan locked in on the gym. Lil Wayne locked in the studio. Um... Uh, same thing with um uh, uh like anybody that just really lock in Michael Floyd Jackson Mayweather, locked Michael in. Jackson, Floyd Mayweather. When they just lock in that, you know, you gonna get those type of results. Mike when you Tyson. try to do a lot of stuff, you over here, you know, like I feel like when Roy Jones went to doing the other stuff and others, it kind of kind of hurt him. And Roy Jones, my one of my favorite boxers. Roy Jones but I felt still was a was a was a. Boy, listen, he had his run. Yeah, hell yeah, and, and ain't no, Ain't no taking that. People <laughs> have a no. career. Yeah, that's uh, my dog. Muhammad Ali got beat sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm saying, this, right. this is his career. When you look at his career, it was a right. phenomenal Powerful career. Power. Yeah. Floyd you can't Mayweather. take nothing away yeah, from Roy it. Yeah, Roy Jones was nice with it. But I know he still was doing all this stuff, so I just know, I'm just saying, like, when people kind of really just be all into one little thing, and that's all they be into, they just be so great because that's all they focus on. Wow. Just doing it like Tyler Perry, he just... Do movies and he just do it so good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But like you're talking about boxing, what do you think about a um, EJ and Crawford fight coming up? That's big. I'm going with a. Uh, who you? Who you? You in Dallas? On? Don't play. No, leave, leave him alone. He can bet on who you want to bet on. What? Ooh, why? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with he going with. No, 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 no. no. Earl, for real, Earl who, is why? from Dallas, but I don't know. I'm not going. I, I mean, I'm. I'm gonna be real with you, man. That's a scary fight. 
Of course, Earl got the bigger frame, as people keep pointing out. But this dude, Crawford, is, he's shooting from each angle. He's, right. he's He can go southpaw. He can go. The dude is versatile. But a lot of people, you know, they Dallas niggas like, nah, ain't not, but I'm telling you, bro, this is not going to be an easy fight for either one of them. Right, right. I think it's going to be a battle of the Titans. That's why I think the yeah. night going to be so hyped up um, at the end of next month. It's going to be a big fight, it's you know, in Vegas. Big. So. I feel like it's good for the culture. I ain't been keeping up with boxing like my dad do because he loved boxing. He loved boxing a lot. Who your dad betting on? My dad betting on who y'all betting on. <laughs> for real? Yeah. For real? Yeah, my dad betting on him. But he, like I say, he know he be keeping up with all the boxing. But you ain't asked him, but you ain't yeah. asked him why? Well, I'm gonna have to ask him why not. So <laughs> yeah. and all that. But I know he he got a good he reason. Because he's watching and right. he, he knows. He I want to hear. I'd love to hear his reason. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I watch it somewhat, but it's just gonna be a big fight for both of those guys. And um, both of those guys are, are dope. You right. know what I'm saying? They both champions. No matter who win or lose, you. That's what. That's the I problem. I think Crawford from what Kansas or something. Now nah, he from up top, man. From uh, I want to say, look it up, baby. Is it Midwest? I, I think it's from, I think from the Midwest. I just want to say Utah, but I know oh, right. man ain't from Utah. Look it up from the Midwest or something like that. Where that boy from? Looking. The bar from up top, Where man. Is yeah. But um, I think I think you, you know, you, you when you think about boxing, man, it hadn't had a big fight like this in a long time. Right, right. We've had some fights, but not like this one. Right. What well, you, you got? Think? Two great fights. No, that's two why, people who have never. That's lost. what I was saying. That's why I was saying it's gonna be a big night in Vegas and shit like that. It's, it's gonna be, be a big night. It says Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, knew I told was, you from the Midwest. I know yeah. it's from the Midwest somewhere. Yeah, Omaha, yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely where he's from. How many belts he got? One. One. And Spence got about four, maybe five. I think four. I'm betting on Spence. Why? Because he done took belts from he done. Yeah, he he has more. To lose, right? Than Crawford with, so nah, he ain't gonna lose. He gonna win. Nah, it might be a draw. You no. never know. So, I know one thing. When was the last time you seen a draw? It's been a minute. Right. Okay, but it, can, but it can happen. She wants to see somebody mouthpiece get knocked out. No, but, I want to see. No, I miss fight like how fights used to be. Nowadays, every time I see a fight, it look more like a show fight. Right, I don't get see. Check, yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. see no like real fight. Blood and all that. Yeah, yeah like, like a real fight right, supposed right, to be. Right. Like fighting like this, gladiators. This, this, yeah, like this this is like a show fight. I'd be getting disappointed, so I don't be like trying to watch oh, it. Yeah, because I remember back in the day, people wanted to watch a fight. Everybody get the popcorn, the wings, and all that, and they mm-hmm. really have a fight night, and, and it'd be a long fight, but it'd be like, man, we nah. really made, we really made our. I want to see a knockout. Right. Yeah. I want to get the mouthpiece knocked I want to hear another drop him in the river song. A drag him in the river. You yeah, want to hear? Yeah, another, you I want to hear. I want to hear some. I want to hear somebody else come out with some hard to that beat, like right. Juvie did, like right. they did coming out. Right. I want to hear that beat again. What right. you think? I mean, a lot of people been using that UNLV beat over again. You know, Juvenile did it on set it out, but that's really I know. UNLV beat. I know that. So uh, yeah, I've been I mean, saying I want to hear it again. Nah, I be hearing a lot of young dudes doing they this. They tried, like, but it ain't hit. Nah, it ain't hit know, like it supposed to hit. That hit different too because at the time and then it was a diss song, so it hit a little different because it was this. Anytime you got a diss song. On top of the beat being hard, you know, it was a diss song and it was hard and it was of the time. So it just, it, it probably ain't gonna, that's like somebody rapping off Hit Em Up. It's gonna, they're gonna probably do their thing and Wayne probably even go off on Hit Em Up, but it ain't gonna hit like when Pac and the Outlaws got on it because it's just what it meant at that time. So I think that's what it is too. I think you think about the whole diss record and what they're saying on the shit. Yeah, so when I say these names, you tell me what comes to mind. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna think of some people. Okay. Say KL, KLC. KLC, a legend, uh, pro- legendary producer, um, Pastor Snake, uh, Beast by the Pound, popular DJ in the, in the streets of New Orleans, just like a real musical genius, love the culture. Uh, like Baby said, a great friend of his, been dope since the beginning or whatever, and like was the main person you thought of when you thought about Beast by the Pound, like the sound behind No Limit. Like you don't get that sound that changed with Bout It, Bout It if you don't get KLC or whatever. So KLC mean a lot. Make them say, uh, you know. Um, fuck them other niggas because I'm down for my niggas. A lot of shit. Um, want, want. So many songs that that still stick with us to this day, you know. Introducing and helping Soldier Slim and all that. Like being really instrumental in his career. Like we love Soldier Slim in New Orleans. Like he mean a lot. And and KLC was to him the thing he called them funky beats. So KLC mean a lot. So that's what I would say if you know you're just running through people. KLC. What about Scarface? Scarface, man. Some might say he won't say it, but 
King of the South. I mean, lyrical as hell. Being the Seagull favorite rapper, Jay Z love him a lot. You know, uh, uh, man, I still love Diary. Like it's just like Scarface, like a great storyteller, and just his paranoia that he had when he be sound like he paranoid and rapping about seeing shit in the streets and just going through stuff and looking over his shoulder, but hustling and still being in the game, but not being able to trust people and who really for you, who you could trust, who friends and who foes, like, and just the way he put it together was just great as hell. Like his pen, he a real genius and stuff like that. So. Shout out to South Scarface. What you say about Eminem? Eminem, I mean Eminem, dope too. Whatever you know, I like Martian Matters. Whatever Eminem had the great flows and Eminem rhyme shit that people be like, how the hell he put that together? I still kind of feel like M got my dog Jay Z on, uh, on, on renegade, on renegade a little bit, but. They were still talking about two different things though, but Eminem went hard though. But they were talking about two different things. But Eminem definitely is dope as hell. I don't care if he white or not. He really can rap. He deserved to to get recognized in the culture because he really like he know he nice with his pen and all that and stand and just a lot of songs like. You Do you know. But you know when they say the best rapper alive yeah, and Google search. and Google search. Nah, they, I'm, they I'm not. say they say it's Eminem. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it probably be a lot of Europeans on that and all that <laughs> stuff like that, putting that that foolishness on that and stuff like that. You know, they make up majority of the population in America. We only represent probably like fourteen percent, so they would push that narrative through Google, and we know who behind Google, so that makes sense, whatever. But he not no damn top to me. I mean, he not no damn in the top three, but he definitely great. But I, he wouldn't be in my top three. That's all I'm gonna say. And Google, they probably gonna do that, but. Look at the damn um the damn uh, Grammys. They get it wrong all the time with the with the album of the year for hip hop. So, I mean, look who control Google. Uh, Sean Cotton, say man, cheese TV. Sean Cotton mean a lot to me, man. Sean Cotton turned me up. Sean Cotton got me out there. He put a light on me. Like I can never thank him enough. I tell him thank you all the time. I tell him on Twitter. People like, man, why you always gotta say thanks, Sean Cotton? You don't gotta do all that. You don't gotta sign me. You dick riding. I'm like, dog, what's wrong with giving people their flowers? What's exactly. wrong with showing gratitude? Thank y'all too. Like thank no, people. Thanks, I, Sean, there's nothing man. wrong. I'm thank. I'm thanking Sean. I'm thanking y'all. It's just. I'm just. It's just. I just love. No, I'm saying people. thanks, Sean, because he came on our show early on a couple right, of times, right. and and he didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? So he definitely uh, one of those guys that I always show love and gratitude to. It's along with Big D the mogul, right? Like because right. he the one that introduced me to you. Shout out Big so D too. That's what I'm saying. I just don't play with it when somebody do something and rock with me. Right. I rock with them, man. Right. I don't never turn my back either. Right. As long as you, as long as you come and, right, and come right, straight, right. I'm rocking I'm with you. With you and like yeah, I I I'm rocking with you. I don't care. Either one of them can call me, and I'm, I'm gonna be there. Right, you know, right. If yeah. you So like I said, Sean mean a lot. Um, shout out to Big D too from um, Media Mogul, but that's Sean mean a lot because like I said, he the one gave me the nickname the New Orleans Spokesman. Like I said, that's hard. I don't have to be the New Orleans Spokesman. I just do my work for what I do, and if people like it, they like it. If they don't, cool. You ain't gotta follow me. You ain't gotta watch my stuff. But I'ma just do my part, you know. And I'ma do. I'ma I'm, I'm gonna use that name wisely for him to say that. That's why I don't mind speaking at the Capitol building. That's why I don't mind getting the newspaper speaking about wrong Jim Crow laws. I'm not gonna just tell another brother down because I don't agree with him. We don't always have to agree with each other. I don't got to say bitch ass nigga I'm going to kill you Because I don't like what you saying We just don't got to agree We can agree to disagree Why as the adults As men We got to be so toxic With one another When we talk to each other We just can say I don't agree with your point You might have this religion You might have this uh, Favorite food You might want this car I might want to live in this house You might want to live in a, a rural area I might want to live in, a, in the city In a condo That don't make me better than you That's just my preference so whatever you like, that's what you like, whatever and all that. And I think people just need to learn how to appreciate people. And there's nothing wrong with just bigging one another up. So like I said, I'm always big showing up. No matter how big I get, I'm always tell him thank you because I appreciate what he did for me. Let me ask you about uh, Boosie, man. You got to give me insight on Boosie. You see what he's been going through here lately. Right. Um, just let me know, uh, like, you know, you see what's going on with Boosie, man. Boosie is one of the guys that I, I really, really... You know, because of the link with Pimp C and the way we all link with Pimp C. Trying, trying I'll always rock with Boosie no matter what. But I said that to say we got to figure out, like, like, you know, how can, you know, Boosie, Boosie speak for the real man. You know, right. like like family man. Again, mm -hmm. the, the, I don't, you look at the part of he good rapper, that's mm -hmm. cool. But I look at the part of having all them kids, bringing them together, mm -hmm. coming to his house. Mm -hmm. I look at that part, right. bro. I look at Webby and his daughter, whoever, you know, when he out, I look at that part. The family, man. I just don't play by family, bro. Right. And, and when I see these guys doing that, 
that's what's gangster to me. Right, right. So what do you think about Boosie and what he's been going through? Here I mean, I I hope he come out of his case with the stuff with the um the feds and picked up the gun charge. They said they saw him on live with the gun in his back, and some people trying to say that they saying that the the, the security guard or some supposed to be getting threatened to take the gun. I don't know how true that is. Not I, I you know we be saying all kind of shit on the internet, but like I said, I hope he come out of it. Boosie beat cancer. He beat that role. So I feel like his his guard got favor on him and he gonna come up out of this situation. I, I hope he do because I know what he mean to the culture and I definitely know what he mean to not just Baton Rouge but to Louisiana and to the South. So, you know, Boosie's voice is very disruptive and it's crazy because people always try to clown him about his voice back in the day. Oh, he got a high pitched voice, he sound easy had a high pitched voice for a guy from California. Right. Uh Pimp C had a high pitched voice for a dude from the South and Boosie got one too, but his voice is disruptive and he gonna speak from his heart. He's just unique. Like the people, yeah, just like the people that admire, like Pimp C admire, he admire Tupac. And those people talked a lot. And Pac always say, you know, what you feel like people know you about? My big mouth, I say what I want, I speak from my heart. You know, I don't know everything, but I'm, I'm gonna say things and maybe I might not be right, but I'm gonna learn. But y'all can't just tell me that because I'm y'all child. So I feel like Boosie, Used to get clowned for how he sound, but now everybody got to hear his voice. He always on the shade room. He always on everybody podcast. Everybody won't talk to Boosie now. The same person that nobody didn't think nobody was going to like his voice is everybody hear his voice. So it just show you how things could come full circle and how you could get pushed to the front. So like I said, I hope he, um you know, come out of this situation somehow, some way, you know, God willing and um. Just let him know, man, keep going. I, I appreciate Boosie. I've been a Boosie fan since Ghetto Stories and Gangsta Music. Trail yeah. Entertainment Day. Shout out Boots and Webby. Webby. I'm a Webby, Webby fanatic too. Webby, and I think you're in town tonight. Uh, in Savage Life still to me. <laughs> I'm gonna you, say, oh, you agree with me? Listen, Savage Life to me, the best rap album ever came out of Baton Rouge to me. I'm going to say that. See that? I'm going to say that. that who the says best that rap stuff, album that? ever come out of Baton Rouge alone. to me, man, is motherfucking Savage Life. Look at all them hits on that record. That dude, he could have <laughs> easily had more singles if Turkey Mel would have got behind and put more videos out because Bad Bitch was hard. Gangsta, we know about uh, Girl, Give Me That, but it was so many other ones that could have went Blade, babe, on already. Way, way back yeah. behind It was a lot of them. Man, come on, man. <laughs> how We Ride. How, oh, it was a lot of them. It's so many of them. He like, killed they that went, album. You know, so... That album, that I don't think people give enough credit for that. Though. I love what Gates, Kevin Gates did, and Young Boy, and and Boosie, and Young Bleed, and a lot of them. Nobody ain't touching. Yeah, Savage Life, one, it's over. You Who want that, G that shit? Man. You want G <laughs> shit? Well, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> the production. And Webby knew how to write songs. Even when Webby was on Gangsta Ghetto Story, he was still in the show. He'll get on there and do like money, cars, clothes, hold. He'll have songs like, if you're going to do that shit, the nigga do it. Do. They say, I'll guess who hot and go to Sir Kid. If you're doing good, then shit you're doing good. He's just shit like that. Like, that was his. Now, Boosie's song on that was like, you know, I had a dream and that was a good one too, but it wasn't like Money Cars Clothes Ho, because that's what Magic and them took and Roy Jones and made Do It Big, I Smoke, I Drink. That was two of Webby's songs. Money Calls Clothes and Do It Big. They combined them together. And that's how they made the song I Smoke, I Drink with Roy Jones and, and, and Magic. Rest in peace, Magic from out the night walk. So shout out to Webby. I know they always try to say Webby be tripping and this and that. But before everybody in Chicago was calling itself a savage and screaming savage, 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 Webby was savage life. Everything was savage. Wow. And that's just my opinion. Man, um, like I said, we done covered a lot of stuff, huh? What do you think? Did we miss anything? Mm -mm. You sure? Mm -hmm. I gotta make sure. I, I, I can't let you get out of here because I, I know already you 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 know you 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 know a lot. So I can't yeah. you be if you don't know it you're gonna speak on it anyway right. and you're gonna make bring some light to it. God gonna make sure of it. Yeah. Who the hottest rapper right now? This young coming out of uh, of uh, New Orleans that you see. And uh, I know you gonna give me your right your opinion. Uh, baby, just text me just now. Um. Man, like I said, um, it's a lot of them, bro, and I, and I hate to drop names because people are always going to say They're going to say, man, yeah, you yeah, forgot yeah. about yeah, me. Yeah, so when people be saying that. Oh, give me a couple of them, man. Leave man, because see them say every time I do this shit, they always get mad and be like, I hear say this person, <laughs> say that person, whatever. And I, I just be hating them. It just really just get tired. It's a lot so, of good music. It's bro. a lot of good. I'm going to just say that for once, bro. It's a lot of good music because like, it's like, you ain't say this person, you ain't say that person. And I do it all the time, and that's all they wait for. They'll watch this whole interview. And then I say a name, and then I wouldn't say a certain name. Then I'd be like, "He don't fuck with us, whatever." <laughs> so it's like, it, it, and it's, it's sad, bro. I hate to do that or whatever, but I just gotta just keep doing my stuff on the low and the and and stuff or whatever, and just find a tan like that. Cause it's like, it's like I said, when you drop a name and you don't drop, you don't fuck with us, whatever. You don't, you're you know, doing such a great job, man. 
I just want to say that and thank you for coming on Boss Talk One One On One thank again. You for me. And I just want to say, man, listen, man, make sure y'all like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, first of all, how can people get a hold of you? Let me stop that. Look, before we even stop, I'm gonna so I'm 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 say, look, I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm say some names whatever, right quick too, whatever. I'm gonna just say, <laughs> I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna just say it, bro. I'm gonna just say it. I'm gonna just do it anyway, whatever. Because I mean, this is a dope interview, and people might see it. I'm gonna see it. YD, Free J Merc, whatever. Uh, J Black, J Arson, uh, Tatiana XL, uh, Treaty got a hot song out there. Um, that's hot right now, blazing up. Um, Viney, Vicky Lo, Dino, um, uh, Ring Gets, uh, Iceberg, uh, fucking um, Weed Junkie ain't putting nothing out in a while, but he was dope. Um, who else? Whatever, man. It'd be so many people you can't even think of. Um, Cole Young and um, dope or whatever. He got something he just dropped out or whatever. I what I'm saying, you always go blank because it's like it'd be it's a so bunch of rappers, of but you can't think of everybody and stuff like that. It's like, man, it's just so many people. Um, I don't know, bro. It's like it'd be so it'd be so hard to remember all those damn names and all that shit. Like they be trying to remember everybody's name, but like I said, man, I just hope that. Us doing stuff like that and, and, and discovering people and all that stuff like that. I just hope it bring more light to the city and stuff like that. I just What's the female rapper down there in New Orleans that's getting down? The one that, that the one that got the song popping right now, hard is Treaty. Um like I said, super bad that bedroom song yeah. right now. Treaty got a song that's real, real hot. Um that DJ Black and Mile produced. You know, Black and Mile worked a lot with like um Frida, uh R. I. P. um Magnolia Shorty, um Drake and stuff like that, Beyonce. So this who produced her record or whatever, and it's going crazy or whatever and all that called making love. So wow, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Um, GD, uh, on Twitter is G G E E D Y underscore P, and on Instagram is GD P as in player of uh, Paul. <laughs> um, speaks GDP speaks all together. So GDP speaks at Instagram on Instagram. Man, man, hey, man, thank you, man. Thank you for liking. Hey, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. GD just came through, man. It's been a great interview, man. I can't wait, man. This here going to be one for the books. We always do a great job together, man, and we're going to keep on bringing it to you. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.